dark reaction that is one of the most important part uh, of photosynthesis in which the fixation of atmospheric co2 is going to occur in the form of carbohydrate okay this is dr pankaj kumar and uh, we will learn about the steps of the dark reaction popularly we call them calvin cycle or c3 cycle the cycle was worked by uh, scientist calvin that's why it is actually called as a calvin cycle and uh, the site of occurrence as far as the dark reaction is concerned that is in the uh, stroma that is the ground substances of chloroplast where all the enzymes concerning with the calvin cycle is present over there one of the most important enzyme that is present for this entire dark reaction is that is uh, carboxylase or rubp carboxylase that fix the atmospheric co2 and as a result a six carbon unstable compound is formed okay so have a look first of all as as i told you that is going to occur in case of stroma and here light is not at all required calvin cycle was worked on by uh, calvin and he worked on chlorella that is a green alga and the name of the technique was auto radiography so what happens that chlorella was fed with a radioactive material and after certain period of time uh, the chlorella whatever the product that is actually being formed they were uh, taken into consideration and according to that the entire calvin cycle is constructed so the cycle begins with uh, the five carbon compound that is rubp ribulose biphosphate they act as a co2 acceptor and in the presence of enzyme rubesco they forms a six carbon unstable compound which soon splits into two molecules of three carbon compound called three phosphoglyceric acid and since the first stable product is three carbon compound we call them c3 cycle as well okay so from here what happens the rest of the cycles complete the entire process so for our convenience we can uh, divide calvin cycle into uh, these steps what we call carboxylation then phosphorylation then reduction and followed by the regeneration of the rubp so let's learn the entire process in a very simplistic manner so as i told you that the first step is that rubp that is a five carbon compound they takes atmospheric co2 and in the presence of enzyme rubesco they forms six carbon this is a unstable compound and soon it breaks into two molecules of 3 pga that is a three carbon compound now this 3 pga gets converted into 13 dipg and of course there is a addition of atp and what is the source of atp this is the same atp that is coming from the assimilatory powers that is formed during the light reaction okay so as a result what we see that 13 dipg is formed that is 13 diphosphoglyceric acid is formed okay and the enzyme is what what we call phosphoglycerokinase that is the enzyme which catalyzes the formation of 3 pg into 13 di pg so this is the second step what we call phosphorylation so this was the first step what we call carboxylation now next what we see that the 13 di pg under the presence of another assimilatory power that is nadph2 gets converted into pgal okay and here the name of the enzyme what we call dehydrogenase so that was the third step okay because we know very well that the conversion of acid into aldehyde is reduction so third step is nothing but it is a reduction so as a result the redu as a result of reduction glyceraldehyde is formed okay now this glyceraldehyde act as a raw material for not only formation of the carbohydrate but also for the regeneration of the another uh, co2 acceptor in the form of rubp so then the series of reaction happens right and as a result of series of reaction happens what happens that here the 
glucose comes out but eventually RUMP that is ribulose monophosphate again 5 carbon compound is formed okay? and 5 carbon compound again with the help of another molecule of ATP gets converted into RUBP and here also the enzyme is kinase. So, if we see the total number of utilization of ATP then what we say that 2 ATP is here and 1 ATP is here. So, the fixation of one molecule of CO2 what we see that 3 ATP is required okay? and at the same time here what we see that uh, uh, 2 molecule of uh, PZL is actually being formed that means 2 NADPH2 is formed. So, all together 2 NADPH2 that is required for the fixation of one molecule of CO2. Okay? So, that is the thing as far as the Calvin cycle is concerned. If you see this entire cycle in a, a detailed manner, we can see like this. So, have a look at this cycle, whatever we have discussed, it is exactly the same. So, you can see there that CO2 being taken up by in the very carboxylation, Rubisco is there. So, ribulose 1 by phosphate gets converted into uh, uh, once uh, that is a 3 Pg right and 3 Pg again takes a ATP they gets converted into 1 3 di Pg and 1 3 di Pg getting converted into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Now, there are various pathway through which the glyceraldehyde uh, not only forms the carbohydrate, but also leads to regeneration of RUBP. You can see there the intermediary for instance DHAP is formed then we can say that erythrose 4 phosphate is formed then pseudo heptulose phosphate is formed right xylulose forms ribose 5 phosphate form and eventually they all together form uh, ribulose 5 phosphates okay so these are intermediary from neat perspective the name of the intermediaries are important not the, the how actually they are forming and how the important compound is actually being formed the key thing from neat perspective is that their energetics and the what is the energetics that for the fixation of one molecule of co2 3 ATP and 2 NADPH2 is required. Similarly, if I talk about a molecule of carbohydrate, then you simply multiply by 6. Okay. So, that means 18 ATP and 12 NADPH2 is required for the fixation of one molecule of CO2 uh, for the fixation of one molecule of carbohydrate in the Calvin cycle. This is all what we have to talk about the Calvin cycle. Right? Thank you.